Hello, my name is Kevin Rourke, and I'd like to tell you about the 10th session of my Only War campaign. The players, we had a lot, we had a lot more um, combat this session than uh, the last few sessions, but the last session has been fairly combat light. Um, we had a few of the other players getting to show off their, uh, their stuff to the combat, tried to make the combat a bit different. It was a longer range than it has been for the last while. Last while, the fight's been generally starting fairly up close, whereas uh, the enemy approaching from a kilometre away kind of gave more of a chance for um, Sergeant Jorgensen to show off uh, what abilities he had. The players had spent some time between the mission uh, when they came back and discussing how things went. They were called by their, uh, their colonel who gave them another mission. There is a castle um, which is currently contested with various imperial forces. It's too far away from their own lines. So they can't make a serious effort to get it. However, there is a cogitator which they want to remove information from. Uh, and Sir Kazuki's player was there for the session, so it should not make it make a bit more sense. Um, they weren't to be told what information, they were just to get uh, access to this certain cogitator and um, retrieve information. Um, this is a sort of hidden cogitator, so they, they, they were, they, they were not authorized to know the colonel hadn't even told exactly what information is um is on this thing uh but apparently it's of great importance uh because the castle and the surrounding area is currently being just fought over because of strategic value at the moment the um they say while all this fight was still ongoing i didn't know if all the other imperial factions and i knew certainly so of the other imperial one of, at least one of the other imperial factions might have known um, wasn't certain, so they didn't want to tip their hand as well by saying, for especially so far away from their lines, they wouldn't be able to hold it. But the intelligence here could be quite useful. And the players, I was like, okay, they started to kind of paying how they're going to do this. They're going to have to, with a small group as well, it'd be easier to evade some of the patrols that were, go that were be moving. Once they retrieved this, they wouldn't have to track the whole way back to their own lines. Uh, once they retrieve it, they, a, a squad of Valkyries would pick them up or something like that. The players did pretty well. We got to the stage of doing the uh, the role for the logistics rating, and it ended up being quite odd. The last few times the players have been abysmally unlucky. Uh, this time they have did really well. Um, We've put that down in character to, uh, well, uh, Sergeant Jorgensen has begun a relationship, well, he's not begun a relationship, he's, uh, he's impro been improving relations with a certain uh, department uniform officer, so they got some additional equipment. Um, they got a plasma cannon with um, five uh, plasma flasks for it, and they received something else. I'm trying to remember exactly what they received, but this is additional equipment because they rolled the max amount, so it's rolled on the other table and you get bonuses. Um, they certainly didn't put anything into as much use as the uh, the plasma can. I think it was something um, fairly useful. I'll try to remember to say it the next way, but they definitely, uh, as you'll see, they definitely made good use of the plasma cannon. When they started moving behind um, enemy lines early on, I had them just get at least one fight and we'd see, we'd see how things went, I kind of thing after that, but they um, were spotted by a group of um, walks on war bikes, uh, ten of them, which count as vehicles, however, you can do a cold shot in the vehicle to shoot the, uh, the biker, I believe, um, and it ended up being uh, pretty deadly because these guys were a kilometre away, and then the guys were going to close in and start firing from the gun. They, the, but particularly, um, it will particularly Sergeant Jorgensen's long. Sorry, it's quite windy out at the moment, so there's a bit of noise going on in the background. Um, Sergeant uh, Jorgensen, with his long lads and Corporal Love, with his plasma cannon, uh, were were inflicting casualties um, in different styles. There was a uh, Sergeant Jorgensen was um, lining up his shots, taking out the drivers, and that was that with him. But every second turn, once he got to a certain amount of range, he was just aiming and tracking them. Every second turn, he would fire his um, plasma cannon. 
uh, on maximum. So it was blast tree doing an extra d10 damage and extra penetration and just if his first volley he took out three of the orc war bikes. Um, later on he didn't we got a series of bad rolls so hit three of them but he didn't destroy all three. However he did manage to um he destroy all, all trees, but he dash to, to, to flick crits of varying kinds on them. Um, one of them, their weapon was destroyed, so he just kept powering ahead, driving forward. Um, one of them, the drive shaft was damaged, so it, I think it couldn't really, it, 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 it gained difficulty doing tests, and it, all sorts of different crits, which, which meant some of them uh, oh, oh yes, and because of what his, uh, an ability he has, anyone who's hit by one of his attacks, counts as pinning. The guy who had the problem with his motive system, so I don't think he could have, uh, he couldn't perform certain maneuvers or his speed was reduced, something like that. Unfortunately for him, he uh, he was the only one of the orcs who failed his pinning check, so the guy was really slow was there running away. And the players, uh, the players let down, they, out of the 10 guys, I think only two uh, a tree got close enough to actually start opening up firing, except for uh, of the tree, one of them still didn't have his gun. So that guy just kept going flat out straight towards them. Um, Commissar Barca started running forward. Sergeant, uh, sorry, Lieutenant McBride there um, kept using his get them order to increase the damage. Guys, which I'll be honest, I started thinking about it. I was like, with with that, with those, with the dead light last guns. They're, when he succeeds in that order, they're doing 9 damage plus 1d10 with a penetration of 2. It, it's not as good as an Astratis Vulcan, the revised ones, the revised uh, errated ones. Um, optional, though I would strongly advise anyone who wants to play uh, Dodge use them, to use them. They, they just, they, they're actually in the same ballpark. Um, they don't have turns from not rolling two dice, and it doesn't have as high penetration. And this is with a special ability being used off whatever. But still, it, it is actually impressive that they can do that. Particularly when most of them, with their debt light, but have like in the case of a trooper, uh, sorry, Corporal Love, he actually has a. He actually has mighty shot, so he's having half rounding up his blissful balls. He's got blissful balls of five, I believe. So he'd be doing 12 plus, you know, it's just, it's actually really high damage for just the last, and he's not just firing last guns, he's firing a plasma cannon. So he's doing really well on that front. And However, he had been firing maximum that plasma cannon, and actually did a horrendous amount of damage to him, took three out straight off the bat. I think he might have accounted for more kills than um, Jorgensen, but it was pretty close, because Jorgensen was firing from further away and for someone to have next, but the plasma cannon was just devastating. So when they got into range, two of them basically slowed down and started firing. They're still moving, but they're pulling their triggers and their weapons and firing for it. And uh, I picked up two dice, you know, I, I rolled hit. One of them's hit, he's hit twice. They were both shooting at uh, Corporal Love. Which um, he failed to dodge, unfortunately. I was like, I'm trying to roll to dodge, failed to do roll to dodge. And I pick up two dice to roll damage. And these things do like 4 plus 2d10 on the penetration of 4 damage. And they're, they're, they're like, they got, I remember, like, I was just kind of like, one of the players said, oh, you know, Asher, it'll only be about the same damage as, like, you know, one of their shooters. So, you know, that's not something to be, he said, I was like, oh, it's only two shots. You know, we should be able to get your medical attention after this. It's not the same damage. Um, they're, they're not shooters. These are dangerous weapons. No, and I, I've never seen none of those guys that had, have played orcs any time lately. Um, when last I checked on the tabletop in like uh, Fort Ed, they were big shooters. So these are orc, large orc, <laughs> large caliber orc weapons. And they thought I was rolling, well, because I was rolling two dice, one player was like, oh, you remember you're only taking one damage. It's like, think it was tearing. It's like, no, this isn't tearing. This is 2d10 damage. This is this is pretty scary. And you take first out damage, he's putting to crits. 
second line damage, and I'm just kind of like, I hadn't worked it out, but I was like, spend your fate points to get wounds back, man, just, just so you don't have, because if we work it out how far you're on crits, you're screwed. I spent them, it wasn't enough, unfortunately, burnt fate point, the character went down. At this point, I think there's two bikes still coming towards him. Uh, Commissar Barker was running ahead, and he's doing, you know, I, I, unfortunately, I just kind of realized, I was like, the reason that this guy who was close, uh, close ahead was like, yeah, he's like, he's not too far away from the cameras there now. But he has no guns, so he's not going to shoot. He's going to close combat, but the rest from behind, uh, I'm kind of like, what would he do? It's like, and I, I just kind of was like, okay, this is pretty deadly, but hopefully we can avoid it. And I just hadn't did a ram maneuver. And I knew this was going to be devastating a bit, because what this is the front armor of the vehicle. Plus a D10, plus for every 10, for a full 10 meters they move, another D10. So yeah, with no penetration, but still that's horrendously high amount of damage. So it's 18 plus 2 D10 damage. He's like, okay, he's got to make a check to obviously be on target, try and ram him. He succeeds, it's a melee attack, and I do say, he's like, oh, you're going to have to um, make a dodge check because it specifically says you can't try and parry this. So what he did was like, okay, actually, wait a second. What it can it is because I've got hard target and I'm running. The deck of negative, and I'm like, hmm. Actually, and I looked it up, but the keywords they have for it are that it is a melee attack. Um, and some a move attack is so like, okay, it's not a ranged attack. If I allow hard target to apply for this, no. Um, but he hits, and there comes our. Because Arca fails to um, fails to dodge it. Um, if he had a few more fate points, he might have been able to um, roll up. But unfortunately, the two guys are down to one fate point now. Because that that orc <laughs> that orc uh, the war pike just went down, took him down. Um, Lieutenant McBrand there started charging towards him to power. Well, actually, he he was charging forward for a little while. But he took, he basically the power something. He said, I'm, I'd like to do a ready action or something like that for when they get close so I can attack when I was like, okay, you can do it. Except I can't. Actually, the problem is mechanically by the rules, you can't delay that much of a, enough of an action to do a call shot so you can't hit the driver. However, because you got a power sword and this thing doesn't have great armor necessarily, you're probably going to, you know he's probably going to try and ram you. But you will probably get your attack in. Even if he fails, unless he fails by a huge amount, because he goes outside. Um, but before it got to his turn, or Vikes <laughs> turn, uh, Sergeant Jorgensen brings his long to bear, takes him down. And unfortunately, it was a really vicious fight, but you know, they're in the Imperial Guard. Um, if you had asked me at the start of the game, if 10 sessions in, there was going to be you know, okay, I've had fate points burning, but no one's actually permanently died, and no comrades have died. I would be like, oh, wow, I, I would not expect that. Um, so they've done pretty well, but unfortunately, they they took some damage out. But the first, they killed all of the orcs. Um, what I did then for next was I stole partially something from Death Watch. I said, well, you're not. You're not trying to sneak around an enemy encampment or something. You're just trying to avoid lots of trolls to go forward. So I said, in Dead Watch, you can use Tactics Recon and Stealth. The Kill Team Leader can anyway. You can roll Tactics Recon and Stealth uh, to try and basically do group stealthily. Uh, to a certain degree, anyway. And I said, well, I'm going to do something a little bit watered down. A little watered down. It was like, you, use, you can use Tactics Imperialis for this. Other people with Tactics Imperialis can aid as well as if there's anyone stealth can aid, and I basically will roll free to see if you can. Like you're obviously encountering small amounts of stuff, anyway at some stage, or you know, doing little different things, but it's like anything significant, are they able to avoid stuff? And they do fantastically well. And Enter Kazuki hadn't been there for a while, and they were always involved with something, but I said, like, okay, he actually likes tinkering with stuff, doing something like So they all started, he started modifying lots of their equipment, uh, putting in custom grips for melee weapons and rifles, like the only their standard gear, he put in a custom grip, which gives you plus five to earth weapon skill or ballistic skill for the weapon. This isn't just a hit, so if you've gotten a custom grip for a power sword, as 
Lieutenant uh, McBrander has, etc. You can use that for powering tests and faint checks and things like that. So it's like, okay, this is really nice. And Sergeant Jorgensen got not just the custom grip, but he also wanted a, he got the, uh, the the modified stock to mold the stock, so it, it molded a bit better to his uh, to his shoulder and just easier to line up the shots. Which gives a little bonus for how depending on how much of an aim action you take for it's a half aim or action or full aim action. And um, to be fair for him, when he's suddenly getting this, he's with his lot with his long lads, he's almost always going to lose the half aim action. So he's getting five, but when he's just half aim action, he's getting a, a plus two in addition. Plus, he's gained a plus five from custom grip. So it's seven more than he was previously without him having to invest the XP in things. It's a huge thing. The guys have previously decided that some of them were, um, I think at the end of the last session, they decided that they're gonna split up some of the duties that um, that a Medic Blacktron used to do because he's just not showing up anymore. So one of them picked up Medicaid and one of them picked up commerce, and one picked up tech use. And it goes, commerce are Barca picked up tech use, and you had. But I, what I, what, what we had didn't realize was that um, Corporal Love had actually picked up uh, commerce as well. But the guys kept it like that. I would have let them be spending XP, but they, they were, uh, they kind of said, well, we'll, we'll, we'll keep it kind of a thing because we can actually help each other because it's int based and not fellowship based. Unlike Rogue Trader, it's int based. So. The guys actually did really well. Like this is them tracking across ground for like I'm not gonna role play through every minute of it. I could do it. And if I was going for certain types of field with the mission, I would have uh, basically had a lot more little things happening as well. Well as Imperial Guard, I want like missions can take an awful long time. If it was a dark heresy game, it wouldn't necessarily be that long. I'd be doing kinda wanna go for a bit of a different feel. But we had some odd stings to start to happen. They managed to avoid, and didn't succeed in all these roles, but these are opposed roles. Um, I just did like an awareness role versus degree of success and stuff. And obviously you can have up two players helping, so that's going on their side, but I didn't exactly use a bad awareness because this is multiple patrols and multiple different organizations. But the guys did really well, and whenever they didn't do well, the enemies just rolled really badly. So, except for the last week of their journey, they managed to avoid everything, however, when they came across Cooper, I was like, okay, you're actually, they've just managed to spot you, but it's not by a huge amount, so I'm not having them ambushing you or anything like that. It's basically, you guys turn the corner, going down to the place, and another group can turn the corner, and they both kind of see each other and go like, oh crap. So they were fighting a group of um, Death Corps of Krieg, and uh, these guys had a melted gun and a heavy bolter, and their, um, their sergeant had a, cha had a chainsaw. So the guys set up and they got ready to start laying down fire because they know these aren't friendlies. There's no friendly Imperial Guard here. They're way behind various enemy lines. Uh, they're not sure, like they were given a map and they were shown this is, they're said under no circumstances if you write down the map, um, you know, where the thing you're going for is. But it's like, well, now that you're leaving, here you've got, we'll give you this information of exactly where the um, enemy, uh, like, uh, where, where the, battle lines currently are. However, by the time you get there, they'll probably shift them back. These are probably not completely accurate due to it's behind enemy lines and they're going to be going back and forth the whole time. Um, but once more, the guys versus an unpeeled guardian because of their equipment, like their superior equipment, just put a bullet on it. Death light, last gun, mono swords, although I didn't use mono swords this time really, and as well as their, uh, their best quality, a uh, full carapace. I know the enemy troops had M36 power and LAS guns and full full flak armor, so they were tougher than the uh, Bantine Long Knights they before. They didn't, uh, before they met before. Didn't recognize any of these guys individually, however, they brought out that old um, plasma cannon for one shot. Um, Jorgensen did, and he fires off the shot. He, he managed to take a few of them, except for. Um, Oh, I think you realize he we we had worked it out and you killed a bunch of guys. Ever worked out? He actually missed, but because it's got a blast, it kind of scattered. Effectively, it went it went to a slightly different location, which would work out. So he managed to kill a bunch of guys with his first shot with that. 
at the minute. But then he switched to his pals, but he that he just has so many guns now. Uh, that the guys have standard gear. That's why they're not getting that many guns as additional equipment anymore. Because I'm kind of going for these. The guys are being sent off kind of uh, for special operations, that kind of type thing. And then he's firing the plasma gun, and he's doing like semi-auto and stuff, and he's just horrifying things. And the distance wasn't as huge this time, but the uh, commissar Barca and um, Sergeant McBrander started closing, closing the gap too, because well, the guys were laying down, they were laying down uh, covering fire, and they were doing serious, serious damage. I'm not. I don't think anyone on their side took took a huge amount of damage and uh, maybe one or two wounds but uh, in that fight certainly one or two and because they had had weeks passing by and the checks were being made because they had Enter Kasugi who was there or Tech Kasugi they managed to see they managed to be fully healed up by the time this fight came around and yeah they actually did um, they, they just walked all over these guys which is pretty cool for me you know I was like I'm not I'm not gonna take that away like they did pretty well it wasn't a complete whitewash but it was a very decided victory Howard who these guys start running the guys like we don't know where the battle lines are we don't know how far they're away we can't have a rotation given away we can't let them get away and you actually had a very cool moment where you had uh, Kamazar Bark had almost got these guys because he's faster when they started running However, uh, yeah, he was he was he was gonna kill these guys just just right out. Um, fair, because he's a comms are he's killing guys anyway, so <laughs> he doesn't have an issue with it. And then you also had you said Sergeant McBrander said no, we're gonna we're gonna take him alive. And then they tried to find out what the hell was going on, what the story was. Unfortunately, uh, I had you know they managed to capture two of them, and they tried to interrogate him. Said, oh, "Look, you're gonna have to." You're gonna have to give me an interrogation roll, lads. And Sergeant Brander, the uh, player goes, well, like, well, we don't actually have time for that. We can't stay here for help because that's how it works. It's gonna take an awful long time to do, like, proper interrogation. Because you can ask him questions and he will tell you bullshit. Um, you know, or he'll just blubber and cry or something like <laughs> he thinks he's gonna die. You're, you're, you know, he's like, you need the skill. If I let you go off, I like occasionally, you know, you'll get some bit of information. But if you want proper hard information you need to go off and get the entire great skill he's like well we don't have it and we're not time to stop first he's like you know sometimes you'll get a little bit but if you want to start mining guys for lots of information you're best off you get interrogation and uh, use it but the guys didn't have time but they were like okay well they did manage to get some sort of information out of these guys because you're going to get some just not necessarily the information you want you know you know just pull the string to go back and he tells you stuff it's like yeah you, you let's slip some stuff and you know they want these guys you know the, the lieutenant McBrander's like you know say any prayers benedictions you have to it's like okay and one of them just starts kind of praying and the other guy's like no you know you don't have to do this i mean uh, you could come back with us we could explain it was all you know misunderstanding a mistake and you you could come back and fight for the imperium as, as this guy saw it anyway but you know um <laughs> you're really bad but there's a unfortunately Corporal York, uh, sorry Sergeant Gorgon was far behind covering him with the long ass and he says uh, what's what's going on and he said yeah we're going to have to kill these guys he says to uh, he says to Brian and I was like look if you think we need to kill them if we have to you're a lieutenant like that your decision like yeah it's my decision kind of something like that but he just says to the private line if that's what you want but I'm not shooting him so he just, he just flat out said if you order you know he's like if you try and tell me to no he's like can't give away the position um yeah uh he just had the last was loud he kind of I think well, he asked you man where where exactly are your uh, your base camp? He's like, oh, I could bring you back, and we could we could explain it. Even though your man kind of is like, it's uh, it's unlikely, especially after you fight in this squad, especially that you're gonna be allowed off. But he's kind of like, oh no, it's it's, it's just a few miles away, and he just goes, Sergeant Branders, 
bang, shoots him and brings him quickly, shoots the other guy, it's like, that's it. So the players are kind of like, God damn it, you're not, you know, this is meant to be fun. You're, you're obviously just like, yeah, except for, you know, he's got to have crap parts too, <laughs> you know. <laughs> if you're doing bad things, uh, which unfortunately, you're doing bad things for, you know, what your character believes are the right reason. Um, or is it at least questioning that? I'm not, I'm not gonna let, I'm not gonna have the fights where the guys are fighting the other Imperial Guard forces. It's not all, I'm not always gonna be dropping in stuff like that. I will drop in stuff like that. Like, if this is a group's orc, the guys are gonna just be like, dead. Nothing, but I'm still happy that this holds meaning to the guys. I'm gonna make sure that this continues holding meaning. It will probably, as they get more used to it, you know, and as the sides get more entrenched and well basically as people get more bitter as this civil war goes on it'll get more, more interesting but we we ended there um the guys went around to check what a couple of these guys had they took whatever for, they were basically like your lieutenant mcbrown is like behind enemy lines take glasgow take any glasgow and charge packs you need take any um you know, this, I found these guys had respirators. Like I said, not all the respirators are going to be working because you're firing enough plasma and certain things. It's like, but they managed to get enough respirators for PCs anyway. So like, yeah, we've got our respirators. You know, these could actually be handy for future. And I list off some of the gear these guys had. And they're going to take to their their, their their squads of like a box of screamers and stuff like that. They decided uh, they kind of debated we won't take this. Um, and just here, Kasugi, um, was like, well, they're going to melt again. I will take that. Uh, who's actually invested in Arms Master? Because like, yeah, no, my guy. You should have a basic idea of how all the guns are fired. He won't be necessarily proficient as someone who's gone through excessive training, but it might be, or you can phrase it another way, it's like, maybe he has gone through for training for all these things. He's just not very exper experienced beyond the training. So, he's a pretty nasty customer with that thing, but he just wanted to take, because he didn't want to be wasted, left out here to fall into decay. They almost took the, the Deck Ops of Creek squads heavy bolter um except for decided it's actually just gonna be too much weight decided the screen was like we can't just take everything <laughs> you know I was, I was being very clear about the weights and stuff but they did lose a few bits and pieces like the melted gun and Shikasugi took combat knife they took the respirators because the respirators like <laughs> they're really handy so the guys are starting to loot stuff which at the start of the campaign if i had them if they had seen another squad looting they would have, they would have like reported them or they don't they wouldn't have done this start the campaign i don't think um not that they would have been fighting other imperial guard but if they came across them like if they came across some imperial guard squad that were down they would take their gear that would be it um at the start no i don't see i don't see them doing that they might bring it back and hand it in but now the guys are getting a bit more they're a bit more seasoned and they know for a fact they're to go. So they had, um, they know for a fact that things won't necessarily go their way. And I made this clear to them. It's like, yeah, no, you, you, you know, if your side comes up the losing side and the wider Imperium recognizes them as the bad guys, you might just be killed as traitors and heretics, and that's it. If you're lucky, to be honest, and this is lucky, they'll probably end up in a penal legion you know there's an outside chance because they're nobles that they'll might be given honorable discharges or they might be sent off on some suicide missions or something without being put into penal legions or they might get off get out okay with certain pounds grease that kind of thing we'll have to wait and see but i'm liking how the guys are developing how their characters are developing how they're reacting to things differently. Um, in certain rep uh, respects, Lieutenant McBrander is still a very harsh taskmaster for the guys. But he's gotten a lot more liberal in certain respects. And the guys approach things, they've gotten a lot more um, creative in character. And they're starting to think for themselves a bit more, which is not something the Imperial Guard wants you to do, but circumstances have forced them to go this way. Um, as I kind of said to him, I was like, yeah, you know, but if things go well, if their side does win, they, they, obviously they, they're nobles and they've been fighting with it for quite some time, they're, they're going to earn their position, and, you know, things could go well for them. But things are only going to get messier for the foreseeable future. Things will eventually work out one way or the other, even with the wider period coming along and um, 
exterminating the whole place, which probably isn't going to happen. Might just send in droves of fresh troops and tell everyone to put down their weapons. Not necessarily like not going to kill them, but you know, they want the weapons to get damaged. They can be given to new units. But as to what happens next, well, we'll have to wait till next time. I'll see you again. Goodbye.